Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. You know, we're going to piggyback off of where we were on Wednesday night. Amen. My wife said I need to elaborate. I need to, I need to do a little bit more with that. On last service we had, we continued in the fact that turnaround starts in me, turnaround starts at home, and we talked about the fact that turnaround, hallelujah, starts with breaking principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places off of our life. Amen? Hallelujah. We discovered that one of the reasons that God called a man and a woman to leave and cleave to one another is so that they could break generational and locational strongholds. Because there are things that people perceive as being okay in different ways regions and localities that need to be broken. The things that are passed down from generation to generation that need to be, the chain needs to be broken. Amen? Amen. And we discovered that the, one of the ways that we do that, amen, is by the joining to and becoming one flesh is because in areas that I may be struggling in, she's probably strong in, and vice versa. See, it's important that we leave and cleave, hallelujah, so that we can separate, amen, and go forward from the level of normal to what God has for us. We looked at the example of Abraham, and the Bible says that God told Abraham, leave your father's house. I'm sending you a place that's flowing with milk and honey. I'm sending you somewhere, hallelujah, the promised land. And so they couldn't get to the promise until they learned to leave and cleave. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give me a little bit more microphone, please. And see, the reason that they have to leave and cleave, the reason we have to leave and cleave, amen, is so that we can break some principalities because the Bible teaches that there, there are some spirits that operate in regions. There's some places where it's okay to be in poverty. There's some places where it's okay to be in bigotry. There's some places where it's okay to be in homosexuality. There's some places where it's okay for certain things that are not okay in other places, but spirits have dominated and established a reign over that region. It's locational. But then it's passed down from one family to the next and becomes generational. And what we have to do is break it. Amen? Amen. And that brings us to Joshua chapter 25. 24 verse 15. If you will, stand to your feet. Tell somebody, I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to break it. Amen. It says this in Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, and, it and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you. It's a decision that we have to make. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether we go forward or not, whether we do better or not, whether we improve or not, whether we break some strongholds or not, it's all a matter of whether or not I choose to make a decision to believe it or not. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, believe it or not. Believe it or not. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King. Hallelujah. Believe it or not. Hallelujah. 
We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but angels, principalities, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. There's a spiritual wrestling match going on. There's something happening in the invisible that we can see whether we believe it or not. Amen? Hallelujah. And I didn't say that to get you spooked about some principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. I said that to get you excited about the fact that you got angels, hallelujah, battling for you, that are there for you, hallelujah, to deliver and perform the grace that God has assigned to you. You got help that you can't see whether you believe it or not. Amen. Amen. And whether you believe it or not is what determines whether you walk in it or not. Amen. Hallelujah. This is going to be a short message. I believe it. Amen. I believe it. <laughs> whether you believe it or not, this is going to be a short message. Amen. Hallelujah. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 23. Again, whether you believe it or not determines if you get to walk in that. Amen. Hallelujah. If I see you looking dubious, doubtful, confused, bewildered, wondering, it may make me extend my message just a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you look like you believe it, hallelujah, we can shout and go home. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I want you to believe, amen, in the invisible things of God enough to break some mindsets, philosophies, ideologies, psychologies, amen, that might have you stagnant and stale and not moving into what God has for you. I want you to break the chains. I want you to move forward. I want you to go upward. I want you to get out of the rut that you've been stuck in. I want you to break some cycles and it's required that you believe it. Amen. 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 I believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Believe it or not. I told Jaden the title of the message and he said like Ripley's believe it or not. I said a little bit. Because in Ripley's believe it or not they have some crazy stuff in there. And some of the stuff you look at and say eh, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I believe that. But the museum is a whole lot more enjoyable if you believe it. Amen? <laughs> I'm telling you, your walk with God will be a whole lot more believable if you believe it. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 23, it says this. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Everything, all things are possible to them that believe all things are possible. If you believe, amen, that there's more going on than you can see. If you believe that the spiritual realm is more real than the physical realm and you believe, hallelujah, that you got help. Hallelujah. In the angels. In the Holy Ghost, you got help that you can't see. So something is happening when nothing is happening. But you got to believe it. There's something that's happening when you can't see it. When you say, well, Pastor, that seems pretty far-fetched that there's something going on that I can't see, but it's real. Well, isn't that far-fetched? Is it that far-fetched to believe that something is real even though you can't see it? Not too long ago, we didn't know that there were viruses, bacteria, things that were in the air, on the tables, on the doorknobs, Everywhere that you put your hands that you couldn't see. But now, it's common for us to believe that these things that we can't see are really there. Well, somebody was saying, well, Pastor, that's because you can see them with a microscope. Yeah, you can see them with a microscope. I got one right here. How many of you have a microscope? Not many people. The average person doesn't have a microscope. 
But yet, we believe, take it by somebody's word that there are viruses and bacteria everywhere that we can't see. And we believe so much in these things that we can't see that we'll wash our hands and we'll not touch stuff. How you doing? I'm blessed, brother, you know. <laughs> because we believe these things that we can't see are real. Why do we struggle so much with believing that angels are real and God is real and here for us even though we can't see it? The things that we can't see, but that doesn't mean they're not real. Amen? We operate in the realm of the invisible. We operate in the realm of the invisible. Amen? We got phones that aren't connected to any wires. <laughs> The travel, the phone call travels through waves that we can't see. See, many of us remember when phones look like this. <laughs> and we had, we didn't have phones that went through the airwaves. We had wires and cords that went everywhere. And you can only go so far. How you doing? Hey, what you wearing today? <laughs> But now we have things, we have operating apparatuses, we live in the invisible. If we want information, we don't pull out no books. We don't pull out textbooks like this. What do we do? We go on the internet. Phone, internet, and connect to things that we can't see. And we have no trouble believing that the internet is real, that microwaves are real, that phone signals through the air are real, that viruses are real, bacteria is real. We have no trouble believing in those things that we can't see. Why do we struggle with believing, hallelujah, that God has given us help, hallelujah, that we can't see? Mm. That's real. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But there's a spiritual wrestling match going on and you're not in this fight by yourself. But you got the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our helper. You got angels, amen? Psalms 91 says the angels have been given charge over you. There's an angel that was assigned to you from the day that you were born. Amen. If you're wondering why that bullet didn't hit you, why that car accident didn't kill you, why these things didn't happen, it's because God has an angel assigned to you. Why it was that you fell asleep on the road and you know that you were veering off to the side, but somehow your car ended up back in the lane. It's because God has given you angels. Angels, hallelujah, assigned to you. You got help that you can't see whether you believe it or not. And the more you believe it, the more you benefit from it. If you believe in the possibilities, hallelujah, that come from receiving help, hallelujah, from invisible means, hallelujah, you can receive the impossible. All things are possible to them that believe all things are possible. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 34, 7 says that angels of the Lord encamp round about you. Amen? Because you fear God and they will deliver you. 
Psalms 103 verse 20 says, hallelujah, that the angels which excel in strength, hallelujah, they hearken to the commands, hallelujah, of the voice of God's word. So you got angels assigned to you to protect you, to help you, whether you believe it or not. Amen. Hallelujah. And you got the Holy Ghost, who the Bible says is the helper, the paraclete. Amen. Hallelujah. The comforter, the counselor. And the Bible says he helps you in the area of your infirmities. Amen infirmities, weaknesses, inabilities, amen, for we know not. And this is what the Bible says. It says the Bible, the Bible says the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmities, amen. And just a little bit of Greek, the word helpeth is the word sum ande lambomi. It's a long word, but what it means is to stand beside and take hold of that which is opposite to and from you. Jane, come here for a second. Help me move this over. You see, he came and took hold together with me that which is opposite to and from me. Don't leave yet. That's what's called help. Now, Jay, we're going to move it back. You ready? Let's move it back. <laughs> see, he can't help me if I'm not doing something. Help requires that I do something. So faith is more, believing is more than just praying and saying. Believing is doing something. And if I believe it or not is made evident in the fact that I Do something. If I believe James is going to help me, I'll do something. If we believe the Holy Ghost is going to help us, we're going to do something. If we believe the angels, hallelujah, have our back, we're going to do something. If we believe that we have invisible means of support, we're going to do something. If we believe, hallelujah, that we have grace that is making us able to do some things, we're going to do something. Whether we believe it or not determines whether or not we do something. In James chapter 2, it talks about the fact that faith without works is dead being alone. If you really believe it, you'll do something. You'll do what you're supposed to do because you believe that you got angels and God and grace and mercy helping you. And whether you believe it or not will determine whether or not you do what you're supposed to do. You can't sit back doing nothing expecting God to do something. He's the God of multiplication but multiplying many times anything times zero is still zero. So it's whether or not you believe it enough to do something. Do you believe it? or not. In Numbers chapter 13 and 14, it tells a story of mainly about two people, Joshua and Caleb. But the Bible says that Joshua and Caleb were two of the twelve men that Moses sent into the promised land to spy out the land, to determine whether or not they was going to do what God told them to do or not. You ever think about that? God said go into the promised land, but we're going to send 12 spies in there to see if we're going to do what God said or not. So they sent 12 spies into the land, and they all went into the land that was just like it was 
promise that it was flowing with milk and honey. If it was flowing with milk and honey, that means it had cows and goats. If it had milk, if it had money, of honey, it had flowers, trees, bees, birds, all these things that would pollinate and make it so there was milk and honey in the land. The Bible says they came back with a cluster of grapes that two men had to carry on a stick because the grapes were, that's how big the cluster of grapes was. Everything in the land was exactly like God promised. But ten people came back and said, we saw the sons of Hanuk there, the giants in the land. The land eats up its inhabitants. Now, if the land eats up its inhabitants, who's living there? How are you going to see somebody there in a land that eats up its inhabitants? And they said, we can't take the land. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, the land is just like God said it is. And the people in the land, their defense is down. Their bread for us. We can take the land. Who was right? Both of them. Both of them got exactly what they said. Both of them got exactly what they believed. The first group said that we were as grasshoppers in our own sight. And therefore we were like grasshoppers in theirs. The second group said that we're giant killers and giant slayers and they're like Wonder Bread. It's time to make some sandwiches up in here. <laughs> it was all a matter of whether they believe it or not. Did see the second two, Joshua and Caleb, they say God is with us. If God is with us, we can do it. If God is for us, we can handle it. Hallelujah. If God empowers us and enables us, there's nothing we can't do. We can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Because he strengthens me and you. It's a matter of whether we believe it or not. Do I believe it enough to add some faith to it that will cause me to do it because if I don't believe it, it's evidenced by the fact that I don't do it. I don't put in application. I don't apply for the job. I don't apply for the loan. I don't try to get the car. I don't try to get the house. I don't try to write the book. I don't try. If I don't believe it, I don't try. But see, if I believe it, I got to believe it. If I believe it, all things are possible to me. If I believe, all things are possible. So I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll try it. And even if I fail, I'll try it again because I believe in the invisible. Something is happening when it looks like nothing is happening. It's all a matter of whether I believe it or not. And I don't have to tell you whether I believe it or not. You can see whether I believe it or not. Back to James chapter 2, he said, you may say you have faith, I'll show you my faith by my works. It's the things that you do that confirm the things that you might say. Faith is more than just saying and praying. Faith is doing and giving and living like you believe it. And if you believe it, if you believe you've got help from on high, if you believe that God's grace is sufficient for you, and if you believe, hallelujah, that God will do exactly what he promised you, it'll make you do what he tells you to do. The question is whether I believe it 
or not. Tell somebody, I believe it. I believe it. I believe, hallelujah. I believe in the supernatural intervention of God. And I expect a move. I expect, hallelujah, great things. I expect the turnaround in my life. The turnaround starts with me. And the turnaround starts with whether I believe it or not.